Then finally in part D, you need to advise crazy stationers whether it will be cost effective for them to outsource the collection of debtors to the professional service provider. All right, so let's go back to the information in the scenario. You'll remember we read through this and we saw that they want JW Consulting to advise whether the outsourcing agreement will be cost effective. So exactly as per the required. And they've provided the following information in this regard. So they've given you credit sales. They've also told you that bad debts are 5% of credit sales. The service provider fee amounts to 4% of credit sales. So that's obviously going to be a cost associated to this outsourcing agreement. The professional service provider isn't going to do this for free. That's obviously the fee that they're going to charge. The average collection period will reduce to 60 days. Now, we don't know what the current average collection period is. However, you have been given the current debtor's age analysis. And we can use this debtor's age analysis over here to calculate the current average collection period. Now, I'm assuming it's going to be more than 60 days because I tell you here in the question, or you should assume when you're reading through this, that I'm, I'm assuming I'm you when I'm doing this question, guys. But what you should have assumed is this is obviously more than 60 days because I tell you the average collection period is going to reduce to 60 days. So if it's going to reduce to 60 days, the current average collection period must be more than 60 days. Okay, but we don't know. We haven't calculated it yet, but we can use this information to calculate it. And bad debts will reduce to 2% of credit sales. So bad debts are currently 5% of credit sales. So that's obviously also positive because bad debts are going to reduce. So we have the fee that's going to be paid to the service provider, which will obviously have a neg which will be a cost, okay, will have a negative impact on this calculation. And the fact that bad debts are going to reduce is obviously positive. And the fact that the average collection period is going to reduce is also positive. Guys, you obviously want to collect money from your debtor, debtors as quick as possible. And remember, the impact of this is on finance costs. If you've got money tied up in debtors, or in other words, if you've got debtors sitting on your statement of financial position, that means that you've supplied them with stationery, in this case here, because we're dealing with a stationery supply. It means they've been supplied with stationery and you've given them the stationery so you don't have the inventory anymore but you, they haven't paid you. So you don't have that money in your account. So you can look at this in one of two ways. Either it's an opportunity cost, because if the money was in your account, you would be earning interest on that money. So it's an opportunity cost, which is where the finance cost comes in over there. Or it's an actual cost, because if you don't have the money in your business, but you've already had to pay your suppliers, you would have had to use your bank overdraft to pay your supplier. And obviously, if you haven't yet collected the money from the debtor, you don't have the money to pay your supplier, so you use your overdraft to pay the supplier. So either it's an actual finance cost because you haven't collected the money from your debtor and you're using your overdraft to pay the supplier, or it's an opportunity cost because you don't have the money sitting in your account. But you are also specifically told here that the bank overdraft is used to fund accounts receivables and the bank overdraft rate is 12.5% per annum. So this finance cost here is the finance cost on the bank overdraft. So if the company has sold stationery but they haven't collected money from the data and they need to pay their suppliers, they obviously use their bank overdraft to do that and they're going to have to pay interest on their bank overdraft. So you obviously want to collect the money as quick as possible from your data because then you use your bank overdraft less. So if the average collection period is going to reduce, that will be positive because they'll save in finance costs. So we've got two savings here. We've got a saving in bad debts and we have a saving in finance costs, um, but we have a cost being the service provider fee. So we need to weigh those two up in order to determine whether this agreement is going to be cost effective for crazy stationers or not. Okay. So let's start with the service fee. Let's calculate the service fee. So the service fee is going to be 4% of credit sales. Okay, which is going to be 600,000 Rand. And I'm going to show that as a negative amount because it's a cost. Then let's do bad debts next because that's the easiest. 
So we're going to have a decrease in bad debts. Now, you can perform this calculation in one of two ways, but however you perform the calculation, you're going to come back to exactly the same answer. So it's perfect. Whatever you do is fine. What you can do is you can take your credit sales and multiply it obviously by 5% to get the current bad debts. Then take the credit sales and multiply it by 2% to get what the bad debts will be if they enter into this outsourcing agreement. And then obviously the difference between the two is the decrease in bad debts. Or what's even easier is if your current bad debts are 5% of credit sales and after entering into this agreement, they're going to drop to 2% of credit sales, that's a 3% drop in your bad debts. So an easier way to perform the calculation is to just say the credit sales multiplied by 3%, which will give you the decrease in bad debts, the difference between your current bad debts and what the new bad debts will be after entering into this agreement. But however you perform the calculation, you're going to get exactly the same answer. So that's perfect. As long as you come up with a saving of 450,000 Rand, you're perfect. All right, and obviously show that as a positive amount because it's a saving. It's a decrease in bad debts. Then lastly, we also know that the average collection period is going to reduce. So that means we'll have a saving in finance costs. Uh, this is a bit of a bigger calculation, so we're going to perform a separate calculation over here. Okay, what we need to do first is we know that the average collection period is going to reduce to 60 days, but I said to you already, we don't know what the current average collection period is. We know that 20% of debtors will pay in 30 days, 35% will pay in 60 days, etc. But we need to calculate an average because we can't work with all of those amounts. So it's easy enough to calculate the average. We're going to say, let's calculate the current average collection period. Okay, wherever you have percentages that add up to 100% or probabilities, the logic of the calculation is always exactly the same. We're trying to come back to what 100% is. So if 20% of the debtors are going to pay in 30 days, it's 30 multiplied by 20% plus 35% are going to pay in 60 days. 30% are going to pay in 90 days. I'm just going to multiply this all out. And 15% pay in 120 days. That's going to give you an average of 72 days. Because we can't work with all of those different days. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days with all the different probabilities. We need an average. So the current average collection period, we've calculated the average, is 72 days. And we know that if they enter into this outsourcing agreement, it's going to reduce to 60 days. Okay, so we were right. It is higher than the 60 days that it's going to reduce to, which obviously makes sense. Now, this is going to have an impact on finance costs. Now, let's have a discussion over here. Guys, it's important to note, in order to calculate finance costs, we need to be able to um, estimate the debtor's balance, okay? Once we know what the debtor's balance is, we can multiply that by the interest rate. And in this case, we know that they are financing accounts receivables, or they fund their accounts receivables using their bank overdraft, and the bank overdraft rate is 12.5%. So that's the interest rate we would be using over here, is the 12.5%. So we need the debtor's balance We'll multiply that by the overdraft rate that we've been provided with, and that will give us the finance costs. We'll calculate the current finance costs, the new finance costs, and then we'll be able to see um, the decrease in finance costs. 
But before we can do this, we need to estimate this debtor's balance. We don't have this debtor's balance. And that's what you need this average collection period for. We're going to use that average collection period in order to estimate the debtor's balance. Now, the logic that we follow, you know, how do we calculate the debtor's collection period? Okay, because this is a formula you know. If we are trying to calculate the debtor's collection period, we take debtors, we divide by credit sales, and we multiply by 365 if we want the answer in days. And I did specifically tell you in the scenario to assume a 365 day year. All right, so that's how we would calculate the debtor's collection period in days. But we're not trying to calculate the debtor's collection period. We have the debtor's collection period. We know that it's currently 72 days and it's going to decrease to 60 days. So we have the debtor's collection period. Instead, I said to you, we are trying to calculate the debtor's balance. So we use this same formula, but the subject of the formula just changes. We are now just trying to solve for the debtor's balance instead of the debtor's collection period. And we're, sorry, tongue tied there a little bit. If we are trying to calculate the debtor's balance, make that the subject of the formula. We then take credit sales and we multiply by the debtor's collection period. Divided by 365 days. Right. Now, the logic is, guys, we're keeping, let's just look at the maths here. You're keeping the debtors over here. If we want to move credit sales across to the other side, we're dividing it over here, which means we need to multiply it. So it's going to become credit sales multiplied by the debtors collection period. If you're dividing it here, when you move it across to the other side, you need to multiply it. So we've then moved that across. Then this is being multiplied over here. So if we want to move it across to the other side so that we can solve for debtors, if we're multiplying over here on this side, we need to divide. There's your maths logic. If we are solving for debtors, we take credit sales and we multiply by the debtors collection period over 365. Hey, there's some revision of high school maths. Okay, sure. And an absolute mess as well at the same time. But guys, that's the logic that we are following over here. All right, let me not be too pedantic about the mess and let's get on with this. Okay, which is very hard for me. Right, let's recap, where are we at? We're trying to calculate finance costs. In order to calculate finance costs, we first need the debtor's balance. We'll take the debtor's balance, we'll multiply by the overdraft rate that will give us finance costs. Let's first calculate the current debtor's balance. To get the current debtor's balance, we need to take credit sales, which is 15 million rand, and we need to multiply by the debtor's collection period and divide by 365. We calculated the current average debtor's collection period to be 72 days. So multiply by 72 and divide by 365. That's going to give you the debtor's balance. Now, it's important to note, guys, this isn't the exact debtor's balance that you're going to have sitting on your statement of financial position at the end of the year. This is just a way that we can estimate the debtor's balance, okay? There will be differences between this debtor's balance and the statement of financial position. If you have debtors on the statement of financial position, then obviously you don't need to perform this calculation because you have the debtor's balance and you can just use the debtor's balance. But we don't have the debtor's balance, so we need to estimate the debtor's balance. And this is the only way that we can estimate that. So we can then use this to calculate the current finance cost because we know that the overdraft rate is 12.5%. So current finance costs will be 369.863. Okay. And we're trying to work out what the decrease in finance costs will be as a result of the decrease in the average collection period. So in order to do that, we're going to have to calculate the new debtor's balance. So 
So credit sales will still be 15 million rand, but now the average collection period is going to reduce to 60 days. So the new debt is balanced. And we can then use that new debtors balance to calculate the new finance costs. And you can see, because the collection period has decreased, the debtors balance has decreased because obviously they're collecting the debtors quicker. And the finance costs will decrease because they won't have to use their bank overdraft as much because they're collecting the money from their debtors quicker. So we can calculate the decrease in finance costs. Sixty-one thousand six hundred and forty-four. If you perform the calculation in a slightly different way, you would have rounding differences and things. Guys, please, rounding differences must be marked through. You will never be marked down for rounding differences. Okay, so that's a decrease in finance costs, it's a saving, it will have a positive impact on profits. All right, and those are the only things we need to consider. We've taken everything relating to this agreement into account, so we can then calculate the overall impact on profit. And we can see that this outsourcing agreement will decrease profit. So make sure you actually answer the required. We can see it's not cost effective. So it is therefore not cost effective to outsource the collection of debtors. To the professional service provider. answers part D of the required and it brings us to the end of this question. If there's anything that you're still unsure of, please let me know. Thank you guys.